Welcome back to the show, everybody. And while the market is in the crapper, we're going to hear from Apollo, BlackRock, BMY Mellon, State Street, and their consortium, New York on crypto, Gary Gensler off the reservation. <laughs> I got a vote on that one in the yes box. Fed survey on faster payments. We'll get up to that. And Swift ISO 20022. Where are we at on that timeline and mass basis coming? We're going to get into it. We're also going to see a former SEC official using cancel culture on XRP investors and holders. And we're also going to hear from Coins Kid. What's going on with price right now? How low can we go somebody roll that beautiful intro digital perspectives with brad kimes come on in Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove and everything that we're talking about here today. Let's take a look at this market and the numbers here. $1.694 trillion. Yeah, we're bleeding pretty heavy at this point, ladies and gentlemen. We're now off by 3.54%. Uh, today it is several hours later and more money missing from this crypto space bitcoin bitcoin holding its own at 37,600 plus we see ethereum at 2500 still and we see xrp coming in at 69 cents off by 10 percent plus on the 24 hour and 15.24 percent on the Tw uh, seven day. Take a look at the range of price right now. 68 cents on the bottom 77 on the top. Let's get into this it's a Pablo Picasso from masterworks.io is what it is. That's right. Right here, baby. And I'm a proud owner of a piece of that painting. And I tell you what, it feels really good. You can get into fine art, blue chip art like this for the first time in the history of mankind and not be as wealthy as some of the wealthiest people of the world. That's what masterworks.io is bringing to all of us. And I am scooping it up as fast as I can. And you know what? It's on a day like today in this volatile crypto space that makes me feel good that I got some money parked in this Pablo Picasso and the Christopher Wool and the other stuff that I'm in, the Banksy as well, because I know it's not nearly taking the hit today that my crypto portfolio is. And that has been my plan, is to take my profits from this high-risk environment, investment sector of cryptocurrency and digital assets. And as I get gains, to move them into more secure investments like real assets, like gold and real estate and fine art, baby. You better believe it. Let's get going here. Link in the description box for anybody interested. Canadian regulators don't want to sell custody, custodial wallets promoted. Yeah, I guess they don't. A little bit of tyranny and fascism kicking in up there. Not liking it. Let's hope that stays an isolated event and they get that tamped out soon. You know, let's let freedom ring all around the world. 428 days into the American crypto innovation under siege, by the way, and 12 hours and counting here in the United States. We got our own problems, too. But I'll tell you this. With the market down, with a case unresolved, all of that happening. Look what's going on here. Consortium. Really? Do tell. Well, will we will. It's BlackRock, BNY Mellon, State Street, Join Blockchain Consortium for Alternative Investments. Yeah, they say having a single shared transaction record eliminates duplication of efforts and costly reconciliation processes between parties. They see potential distributor ledger technology has significantly to improve both efficiency and security across alternatives industry. It goes on to say here, almost all the consortium participants have existing blockchain activities for example, Apollo has partnered with Figure Technologies to put funds into blockchain. It says Carlisle acquires funds distribution platform Calistone. It says here, which has used blockchain for years, BMY Mellon State Street have both created divisions to focus on digital assets. iCapital hopes to add additional assets and wealth managers. The company currently services $112 billion in client assets. The value in a private permission distributed ledger solution is that it creates one single golden source of data, eliminating the need for multiple reconciliations, allowing all the parties in a transaction to read from and write to the same record. 
This is coming from the Chief Information Officer at iCapital. This synchronized approach enhances reliability, security, and efficiency. It is the latest technical innovation that we are developing to enhance our platform capabilities and the alternative investment ecosystem more broadly for benefit of all participants. It's not just about the interworkings of their business together. They're also, as they said here with BMY and State Street, created divisions to focus on digital assets as well. And I did want to note here that they also talk about in Australia, the ASS, ASX post-trade solution is also creating a DLT-based golden record as well. Just covered it yesterday. And remember, here's the paper right here from back in 2019, the statement to the Australian Securities Exchange. And it says, deed of variation of settlement agreement with SOAR Labs, which was processed and handled by none other than Ripple right here. Ripple right here. And the $579,800 payment obligation settled by the transfer of Ripple right there not saying that ripple's handling the settlement for the australian securities exchange but it does appear that they've handled the settlement of the deal for soar labs who may be doing it you have to wonder if soar labs will be using the xrp ledger or any of ripple's suite of products backside we'll keep an eye on it new york is the latest state trying to woo companies in the battle to become the u.s's crypto capital well they got a lot of work to do because, I mean, New York has just been devastating on its residents, allowing them to get crypto. So I hope that we do see that because I tell you, it will show to me even more of a push to get the crypto regulation sorted out, not just on a state level, but on a federal level, because New York houses Wall Street. So let's hope that we all see New York become a hub for crypto companies. Looking right here, we start with this disturbing piece of information. Yes, we do. Yes, this is Jim, old Jimbo here. <laughs> We're going to take a look at this clip. And uh, let's see, a lot of people think Gary Gensler is off the reservation, says one of the gentlemen talking to Jim Cramer on the show. Listen here. Elon Musk accusing the SEC of leaking information from a federal probe, tweeting, quote, this is just peeling back the first layer of the corruption onion. Stay tuned. Of course, last week I had more choice words for the SEC, Jim, uh, accusing them of trying to thwart his right to free speech. Yeah, I, I think that it's just not worth tangling with the SEC. And, uh, Elon is doing such a great job. It's just, I mean, I totally understand. I know Mark Cuban at one point tussled with him on a different issue, but they're just not worth picking on. It just doesn't get you anywhere. So, uh, I, look, I think he's a great man. I mean, it's just my own advice that stay focused. Just stay focused. It's it's the same thing to the SEC, by the way, though. I mean, they're doing all these weird potential rulemaking for hedge funds and disclosure. You know, I'm glad you it mentioned it. weird to me. A lot in crypto and spat, so many things where we're still waiting. Yes. Still waiting. And, and a lot of people feel that he's off the reservation. Yes. Uh, I don't, but he's in common phases. He's really going full board on a lot of issues that don't really. Gensler. I know. He yeah. is on stuff like these are sophisticated investors in these funds. That, why is this become such an obsession? I, I think I'm going to have to get to the bottom of that. Yeah, you do that, Jim, because right now you're carrying the torch. You know, you say you don't disagree with him. So what is it you're going to get to the bottom of? It sounds like you're just placating the gentleman who's actually asking real questions. Speaking of real questions, here's some. This is a great interview done by Tony Edwards from Thinking Crypto here with Joseph Hall, partner at Davis Polk and Wardwell, Wardwell and a former SEC official here. Now, you know, it's interesting. Just listen to what he's asked here because we're going to get into this. Now, this may be... Uh, Joe, I, an awkward question to ask you, but I have to ask it because there is a lot of video clips, a lot of connections, documents, and so forth. Um, you know, why do you think Jay Clayton handled the lawsuit the way he did on his way out? And in addition to that, there, there's potential conflicts of interest with Jay Clayton and William Hinman with regards to the Ethereum, uh, not a security speech. Uh, what can you tell us about that from your perspective? Um, I mean, obviously, I, I am aware of the uh, the uh, the allegations around that. Um, I, I, I don't put a lot of stock in it, 
honestly. Um, uh, it, it's it's just it's just not how um, the SEC operates. Uh, it's not how those two gentlemen in particular <laughs> operate. Um, I, 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 I view those um, allegations as uh, conspiracy theories. Um, you know, it's the, the status of, of Ethereum um, as a security, um, like the status of Bitcoin as, uh, as a security and, and any, any other sort of asset that the staff is looking at, um, uh, is, is examined by um, a lot of different people um, at the SEC. And these decisions are made by a lot of different people at the SEC. Um, and the idea that either Bill Hinman or Jay Clayton um, uh, you know, had an undisclosed financial motivation for going in one direction or going in another direction I, I just, I just think that's unfounded speculation by, by, um, by, by people who don't really have a clear understanding of how the SEC operates. Frankly, um, I could be proven completely wrong, obviously, um, and maybe we'll find that that there is some, um, you know, dark conspiracy going on here. Um, but to me, it's about the same as the QAnon conspiracy. Oh, is it? Well, <laughs> look, I love that he left himself a little room. Now, I may be proved completely wrong. Well, I'll tell you what, Joseph Hall, you know, in in the fairness of getting everybody to level set, I would like to invite you, like I know you've probably been already invited on DAI, D Digital Asset Investors Channel. I would also like to invite you on this channel to speak with John Deaton and go over the crypto timeline and the videos and evidence is nothing and you can be, if it is nothing and can be easily dismissed, then this gentleman or any other SEC institutionalist, institutionalist should have no issue debating John Deaton about it. I'm not even a securities lawyer, so he should be able to crush me if the evidence is so conspiratorial. Well said, John Deaton, and well said, DAI here as well. You know, and I, I really, you know, in this whole thing, am picking up this right here. When you find that you can't argue the facts, push the cancel culture button and attach some negative surrounding to you or negative group or entity to the person that you feel like you cannot really debate properly. If he, in fact, was so open to the idea that he may be wrong, he wouldn't be so quick to try to cancel culture people like the XRP community of 65,000 strong and say that we are equivalent to the Q group or what QAnon or whatever it is. I have to say, you know, really, really bad tactics there, uh, Joseph. And I really hope that you would take up the opportunity to have a real conversation where you can level set with the rest of us, because we know that there are some indisputable facts and evidence about what has transpired within that so-called SEC. That's just not how they do business organization. Let's take a look right here, because I'll tell you somebody else who gets it. It's Charles Hoskinson. Shout out to you from ADA here, calling out the two sides of the SEC. They got one opinion in the court case with the SEC versus Ripple, and then they have another one on the outside of the court case with public uh, persona and their public perception from the agency doors itself. I'm not going to I'm not going to play the clip because we're getting long in the video here, but I want to tell you that this really. I mean, how Charles see it? Charles sees it. He's not an SEC official. We see it. We got the timelines. We got the video evidence. Joseph Hall doesn't see it. Maybe Joseph Hall doesn't want to look for it. A Fed survey found that the pandemic caused half of the U.S. business to accelerate their plans for faster payments adoption. What had started out as a hindrance to what all of us had seen for you know, XRP's journey to mass adoption, helping with remittances, settlement of derivatives, cross-border payments, you know the rest of it. It appears that the length of the pandemic has actually strengthened everyone in moving towards a new system.
the fourth industrial revolution, the internet of value, whatever you like to call it, the survey found that not only were a majority of business already using some form of faster payments, but that most expect to be using instant payment options by 2023 or sooner. Hello. Which coincides with the Federal Reserve's timeline for the new FedNow services rollout. The FedNow service is developing capabilities to address businesses' needs for safe, instant, data-rich payments, collaborating with financial institutions and business solutions providers to implement them by 2023. Remember, FedNow is like a domestic payment side, right? So you may not see digital assets necessarily used in that realm, but the fact that they're moving to that system says to me that everybody's moving to ultimately a newer version of payments, which allows for interoperability, compatibility, and so forth, ultimately for cross-border. Looking right here, ISO 2002 is here in uh, Get Ready for November. This is the timeline that SWIFT is talking about, not us. We're talking about it because they're talking about it. That's how the news should work, right? Looking right here, it's a reminder that the inflow translation services became available for testing within the FinPlus pilot future environment last November. So it's already begun. The service will go live in August 2022 on an opt-in basis and on a mass basis in November of this year. 2022 come on in how about that now that's exciting to me because we know that everybody getting up on the iso 20022 payment language that format is really going to create a level foundation for the payment language world global or otherwise and from within that you will be able to see the opportunity for them to go even further and begin to integrate digital assets, CBDCs, and other forms of digital assets and cryptos and things of that nature inside of that payment messaging system as well. Remember, ISO 20022 has been around for a minute. But let's see what's going on here because we have been witnessing the crypto market currently falling like a manhole cover from the sky. Let's see what's going on now. It's lost this horizontal, which is a beautiful bullish continuation pattern. And what it's doing right now, you've lost the support of that. So you're coming down basically. Let's have a look if this technical target has been met from there to there. And you can see, uh, let's drop that in right there. And you can see not quite, not quite met the technical target, which is around about 66 cents. You've had the wick down there to around about 67 cents. Okay, so you are retracing at the moment, okay, because what you're doing right now, you've come up impulsively and you're retracing to this low. Now, like I said to you, it's really, really important that we don't lose that low, okay? If we start to lose that low, that's really, really bad for XRP, really negative, and I do think that what you're doing here is continuing with the downtrend and you're not looking to break this level of resistance, okay, for XRP, and we might be on the cusp of some kind of capitulation event here for XRP and the crypto markets if we lose this low. So I'm looking at the same low on Bitcoin. We've got a really really strong level of support down there 32k i think it is for bitcoin now obviously this is a massive low just there 55 cents if xrp starts to come down and loses this you're going to be impulsive wave targets to the downside and that would be my minimal target of 40 cents for xrp and you can see from this point right here that is a further depreciation of around about 43 percent which would be a capitulation event you know now, just to be clear, he's giving you what the downside would be if we lose that 55 cent range of support, right? If we lose that 55 cent, you could see it go further down to 40 cent. And if you lose that, obviously, you continue to pull on back to the 27, 28 cent range that we experienced for so long during the bear market, right? Now, none of us want to see that. But if we do, I tell you, Ripple's going to be in competition with me in buying the rest of what's left on the secondary market. Because I'm going to sell, well, I'm not going to sell my car, but I'm going to try to sell Mrs. Backup's car. And I think she could probably hear me <laughs> in the background. <laughs> but the reality is, is I'm going to be doing whatever I can to accumulate should we see those kind of lows, because ultimately, what do I know? And I'm not selling any used cars here, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody's got to make up their own mind at what kind of risk and exposure they want to the market. I just feel confident myself, and it's not financial advice, it's my digital perspectives. This case is not even close to being over. The regulatory clarity isn't even here yet. So until it does... 
I'm accumulating, baby. That's where I'm at. Make sure you check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. Great products and services with great specials and deals, and they are trusted, vetted links. I never respond to the comments 99.99999% of the time on YouTube, and I never, ever use WhatsApp. I will never ask you for money ever. Those are scammers. YouTube will not help us remove them. We have tried so much to get rid of them, and they just won't leave. So no, it's not me. All right, I'll catch all of you on the next one.